We have made it to the Hawker Center. Look, look how wobbly that is. Whoa. Dumpling soup, chicken noodle, wonton noodle. So delicious, wow. So we just got 50 Singapore dollars out, which I'm hoping is going to be enough. What a view. Thank you very much. No, not you. I meant the... the passion is still alive 10 years onto our relationship. Well, yeah, kind, yeah, kind of. All right. <laughs> Hello, guys. Welcome to a brand new video. We are in Singapore. We've just checked into a brand new hotel. This is the Holiday Inn atrium. Do you like the new room? Yeah. Hi yuck. Hi yuck. Hi, yuck. Say hi vlog. Hi vlog. Kind of like saying yuck to everything at the moment so that's great. So we have just arrived here. Arrived here. Yeah arrived here yeah. Arrived here. Arrived here. We've just arrived here and here. arrived here yeah. <laughs> Do you want to come this side of the camera? Are you going to be a cameraman? Come and sit next to mummy. Come and sit next to mummy. Cameraman, all right. We are jumping straight on the laptop. Free Wi-Fi, insanely fast. No nice. password to connect to, I love that. 20 meg, that will do. I, I will say like the internet in Singapore has not been the fastest, but uh, 20 meg is absolutely fine. So the first thing that we need to do today is <laughs> get some coffee because we are under caffeinated. You want some coffee? Yeah. So I am very pleased to take out my Google Maps. Search, you've got bread all over your face. Search specialty coffee and a ton of places come up here in Singapore. I do remember that the coffee scene in Singapore is unbelievable. Lucy and I are big into coffee and we are very much looking forward to trying a new coffee shop. The issue we have, and I, I say issue, it's not a major yeah. issue, but the coffee shop we want to go to is the opposite direction of the food court we want to check out. So we want to try some Hawker Centre food today and uh, there's one that's a six minute walk away, but the coffee shop is a 10 minute walk the other direction. It's very hot out. Are we up for it or not, for the sake of coffee? Or do you want to find one that's slightly less rated? No. Always Hi, make the effort. Daddy. Always make the effort for the good coffee. Yes, but always. Toda always. Love being this always. Buggy at the moment, so it's like. We'll get a grab. Yeah, we could get a grab. That's his name. This is the plan. This is the plan. Ah! Grab to the coffee shop. Okay. Beautiful little flat white, double espresso, whatever you want. Then we do the walking to the Hawker Centre. Well, no, because the walking from that is the longest bit of walking possible. Right. This is the plan. Grab to the coffee shop, beautiful flat white. Grab to the Hawker Centre. Then walk back. Walk from. back to the hotel after all the food. That's the plan. Okay. Nice. Okay, just before we go out, it's time for the Juicy Vlog Room Tour. Okay, so as we come in, we've got the bathroom on the right. Should we do the bathroom first? I always do the bathroom last, but let's quickly do the bathroom. Nice big sink area, loads of spaces spread out. We've got a bath, which is always handy with Coda, and there's a little shower head above it. Then a nice full length mirror, a little coffee and tea station. Coda's cot. A uh, wardrobe space, nice big bed, and the desk area, which is crucial for our edits and our space to get our work done. Nice big desk, actually. Really nice big desk, and a nice big mirror. Probably the highlight. The highlight is definitely the view. We're on the 22nd floor, so going up in the lift, we'll show you the lift in a second when we go down. It's kind of crazy the view you get in the lift. So we can basically see for miles, and I love city views. It reminds us of when we were living in Manila, and our condo had the most amazing view. And it's a similar kind of thing, isn't it? Like a load of Skyscraper's right in front of you. Love it. Right. Daddy. Christmas tree. And that is one of the coolest views in an elevator I've ever had. So we found this place called Common Man Coffee Roasters and we saw these steps and we were like, oh, I'm gonna have to lift the buggy up with Coda in. Um, and then, turns out, they have like this little booth here where you can order coffee to go. And we just wait here. So that is so much easier. I can't believe how hot it is here. It's really warm. It feels hotter than Dubai. I know it's not hotter than we Dubai. We were in Dubai recently and this hot. feels hotter. I don't, what is the temperature? Oh yeah, I could just look. Just look on the weather app. You've got my phone over here. No. What's in the button? 31. 31. Amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This one nice. here. Very good. Mm. Very nice coffee. I feel like it's been a while since I've had a very good cup of coffee. It is. Um, coffee is hit and miss when traveling, but Mm. Like very, poured, very nice. I've poured far too many Nespresso's in the last two yeah, weeks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we have made it to, to the Hawker Center. To Tiong Baru Market. And That's the Hawker Center is on the second floor. So there's a market downstairs, like a wet market, fish, flowers, fruits and veg. You got the lift, and there's 50 stalls, would you say? About 50 here's my guess. A lot. Maybe more a than lot. 50, yeah. We just withdrew some cash. We tend to not get cash out 
because we've been traveling around so many different countries and actually we always do this we never actually get cash out prior to going to a country do we no i feel like everyone does this like i don't know i feel like everyone gets cash out before they go away yeah we never, we never do we tend to try and use card as much as possible um but it seems like you have to use cash at these food stalls so we just got 50 singapore dollars out which i'm hoping is going to be enough i don't think it's super expensive no, at these okay. kinds of places prices are like three dollars $6, yeah. $8. So pretty cheap for... I, yeah, I don't know if this is like a super touristy one or not. It feels like there's a lot of locals eating here, which is always a good sign. Oh, that looks, looks good. good. Where's that from? Is we're actually... We're, like, excuse me, No, we're, we're looking around. There's like so many options and choices. We're looking around people's plates yeah. to see what looks good. We're also Raised looking... Duck. Oh, nice. We're also looking at what has the longest queues because that's a good sign as well. Yeah. Dumpling soup, chicken noodle, wonton noodle. Oh, yum. There's loads of, loads of dumpling choices as well. Um, ah, Grandpa's. There's one called Grandpa. That's cute. <laughs> $5. $5. $5. $5. $5. $5. $5. $5. $5. $5. $5. $5. $5. $5. $5. $5. $5. $5. $5. $5. $5. $5. $5. $5. $5. $5. $5. $5. $5. $5. $5. $5. $5. $5. $5. This place also has Instagram, so shout out. Um, I it's self service, so there's like the cutlery out, the chopsticks, and the tray. Um, we're going for three different things. We've got two different types of pork and a duck. Thank you. So, local ladies came up to us. Firstly, advised us to sit here because the fan's bigger. Good shout. Secondly, she said, next time, ask for the $8 version because you get less rice and three times the amount of meat. But I, I do quite like rice, so I'm actually not mad about this at all. We're so let's hungry. give it a go. We're very hungry. Let's go in here. So, I'm just going to try some of the meat first. Is this pork? I think it's pork. Mm -hmm. So delicious. Wow. That sauce is just super salty. Mmm. So much flavour. Wow. A way better version of like a Chinese takeaway at home. It's Cantonese food, this. Mmm. Amazing. Then this one is a duck, I believe, right? Mmm. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's some of the best duck I've ever had. It's incredible. It reminds me of the duck we had in Taiwan. Do you remember that huge roasted, yeah, massive that, where, duck we had? Where they gave us the head. Yeah. No head this time. Mmm. Unbelievable. And this cost, I have no idea. It was like five dollars and three dollars? Five and three, I think. Or the other way around. And then lastly, I'll just try this bit of pork here with the crispy skin. Mmm. Wow. That skin is so salty and crunchy. Oh, I'm very happy. Wow. Tuck in dodge. So funny. The lady with the drink store here, she said, I said to her, is there anything that's local, anything from Singapore, like a spe speciality thing that we should try? She was like, no, not really. She's like, this one, the Ribena. I was like, oh, okay, like maybe it's made here, maybe it's a special flavor. She was like, the locals think this is the cheapest champagne. <laughs> so I said, okay, I'll have one champagne, please. So we have a champagne and a Coke Zero. Just to cool down for a second. So let's give this a go. It's sparkling Ribena. So actually, I don't think I've ever had this before. I don't think it's really what you'd have at a Hawker Centre, really, but give it a go. Yeah, it's pretty good. Oh, it reminds me of my childhood. Ribena is such a childhood drink for me. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I haven't had Ribena since I was a kid either. Mm, tasty, very nice. Lucy's gone to get us some more food, she's going to bring it back. That only scratched the tip of the iceberg of my hunger, that pork and duck. Lucy's going to gather some more food and bring it back. That's what I love about Hawker Centres, you can just, sometimes, some we've been to even serve you. So you go around and order and then they bring it to your table. Here it's a little bit more self-service, so obviously you need someone like Lucy with you to go and get your food. Table service for you today, isn't it, George? Oh, <laughs> right, this is the next course of our grand meal here and luckily i took a photo of the menu because i've already forgotten what it's called so many of those things i know well this was a small portion he was like do you want more or less i was like oh less is okay thinking we'll try more stuff but it's massive so this is bowl of chicken is hong zhao chicken mi sua and these are just called fried dumplings and he said there's pork inside so maybe some sort of like pork vegetable like filling a, I'm guessing. Like a Cornish pasty. Like a Cornish pasty, yeah, exactly like that. Okay, this looks really cool. The the meat, is this chicken, yeah? The chicken is bright red, so I don't know. Look at the colour on that. I don't know what they put on that, but it is it's just bright red. So let's take a big bite of chicken first. Mmm. Mmm. Really, really good. Oh, I thought you weren't sure though. No, it's quite herby. Okay. And you can tell it's been kind of soaked in the broth for some time. The chicken takes on that more kind of i don't know boiled kind of taste <laughs> okay let's look at these noodles man whoa okay let's get some of these 
wow, it's really good. What is the flavor? I can't quite describe the flavor. It's kind of quite subtle. Like you could eat a lot of this. It kind of almost tastes healthy. It, it doesn't taste fried. like too heavy. It's nice and salty, but not overpowering. It's a tiny bit of, not heat, but spice. You can kind of taste spices. Just want to thank the sponsor of today's video, which is Tron Smart. Um, they make the T7 portable waterproof outdoor speaker, which I've been trying out recently. And this thing's really cool. I wanna begin by saying this is the easiest Bluetooth speaker I think I've ever connected to in my life, potentially. There's no kind of like pair button where you have to hold it down or wait for a flashing blue light. You turn it on, open your phone, it's there, connected straight away. We've got 360 degree sound and it's always hard over camera to show the sound quality, but let me play this. Awesome, bassy sound, it's nice and loud. Gonna be perfect for our garden in the UK if we want friends around in the summer, have a barbecue. Or because of how portable and light it is, we can take this traveling with us. It's waterproof, so when we're in those nice villas in the pool, we can throw this around, play some music as we're enjoying the sunshine. It has various different colors that it shows as it's playing music. And the build quality of this is just solid. This is my kind of product, it's nice and simple, but quality. This speaker is IPX7 waterproof. I had to Google that as well. Basically means it's very waterproof. And if you really like your music and you like a little bit of customization, in the app you can do custom equalization. So you can change the treble, the bass, and some other frequencies to really get the sound that you want. I will leave a link to this product in the description of this video. Thank you so much to Tronsmart for sponsoring the vlog, sending us this. We're gonna be enjoying this. Everyone needs a quality, waterproof, portable Bluetooth speaker in their lives. Take this anywhere with you. Check it out, link in the description. Let me try these. Gyozas. I've broken the top off of one to let it cool down. I'm gonna dip it in the soy sauce and ginger that I made up. There's a little condiment station at the front of each of these stores, and that's the inside. Mmm, wow, so delicious. That goes so well with the soy sauce and ginger. It's very moist inside, often you get with fried dumplings, they dry out a little bit, but the pork and the vegetables are very wet inside, um, but the outside is very crispy. Mmm, that's really delicious. It tastes like a very good gyoza. It's funny because the photo didn't actually look red at all. It was more orange. Hmm. Kind of just tastes like a, a really hearty chicken soup that you might have in England. <laughs> the broth does and the noodles. Hmm. It's really nice. Let's try some of that chicken. It's a clear broth, so the flavour is definitely quite subtle. You're right, there's a slight... My tongue's tingling slightly, but not in a spicy way. I can't quite put my finger on that. Hmm. Really yummy. Very Moorish. Code is currently eating the pork gyozas and he absolutely loves them, the dumplings, sorry. Fried dumplings are Coda's choice today. And to be honest with you, I didn't think he'd be eating here. I thought it'd be a little spicy food and nothing that he could really eat, but definitely baby friendly and he's really enjoyed it. And I love that he's just a random, like he's a one-year-old just chilling out in Singapore, eating the local food. I think that's so cool that he gets to experience this kind of stuff with us. Okay, that looked good. We're kind of on the hunt for something sweet now. We like to try savory and sweet stuff. Hmm. Oh yeah, this is like a dessert place. A dessert house. So it is. Thank you very much. So whilst George was ordering this, wobbly masterpiece, I picked up some pineapple that's pre-cut. Chopping pineapple is probably the most irritating fruit to serve because you have to like get rid of the hard skin, like get the core out. Not fun, and I feel like you lose a lot of pineapple in it. But this was 80 cents, Ooh. so I got two because it's Coda's favourite fruit at the oh, moment. Nice. He used to be a watermelon baby, now he's a pineapple baby. So this looks rather interesting. It's an ice-based dessert with a mango pudding and fruit cocktail. Can you hear that thunder? I know. We're meant to be going. Glad we are undercover. My dress. Yeah, my dress strap broke. George has tried to fashion something behind it. It looks uh -huh. It's so. perfect. Yeah, you'd never know. Oh, hang on. Let me film this. Look, at, look how wobbly that is. Super wobbly. Oh, oh yeah. It's hard actually. Oh my god. <laughs> this will hopefully make us feel a bit cooler as well with all the ice. Well, yeah. It's very warm out today. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Mm. Oh god, big bit of fun. So good. Wow, that is good. Super sweet. I like Sickly these sweet, but clear quite little, delicious. These little clear cubes are there. Yeah. Mm. Those jellies are so nice, look. Mm. Yeah, it tastes like a Solero ice or something. It kind of does. This is so sweet. Like ridiculously. Got the mango in here. Even some chia seeds going on. It's like a tinned fruit cocktail, I think, because the grapes are those ones. I remember when you were a kid having that fruit cocktail, I always had it. I literally saw him open a tin. <laughs> $3.20. 
for like two pounds. Sounds cheap. I think gone are the days. Like, I may be wrong if you go somewhere super local, but when you used to go to Thailand and get a meal for like 40 p. But we're in Singapore. I feel like those days are over, but I don't Singapore's know. Singapore's different. Yeah. Yum. Okay, we are so full, but I am gutted that we missed this menu item. Fried carrot cake. I've never seen that anywhere in my life. And carrot cake is my, oh, it's my go-to dessert. Carrot cake is my absolute favorite. And frying it just sounds amazing. Fried carrot cake. I know, I know it's not gonna be your thing, but for me. I just feel like sometimes you don't need to fry a food. Yeah, like things can exist without being fried in the world. Yeah, but fried it's carrot cake. Smell that. Yeah, it's because it's been it's raining it's right raining. now. Like, actually, I've got to put this camera off. away. Okay, I'm gonna run over to 7-Eleven. I need All to get right. rid of some wipes, so okay, I'll be right cool. back. Very handy that there's 7-Eleven here. We have come out the food court, the Hawker Centre, extremely satisfied, extremely full, and we did not spend much money at all. That was awesome. Really, really cool experience. If you're ever visiting Singapore, you have to find yourselves one of these and just go around, order a load of food, and enjoy. Very friendly people as well, holding the door for Lucy there, as I was scrambling across the road. Ooh, they have nice looking sandwiches in 7-Eleven here. We were in Tokyo oh, recently. So much cool stuff. You I may have seen the vlogs, and we did a whole day eating 7 Eleven food in Tokyo because it's so, so cool. Oh, Minnie Mouse lip balms and nail varnishes. So cool. <gasps> they sell oat side here. My new favourite oat milk. Oh, I can, I can I take one home? Yeah.